Hello everyone. In this video, Windmill Software will present the Clarity Project and Portfolio Management Solution offered by Broadcom. We will show how the tool can help organize and accelerate project planning and execution activities in your organization. The core areas we will focus on are demand management, how to capture new ideas coming in, project management, managing key aspects such as project team, schedule, risks, and budget, financial management, creating effective forecasts and tracking variances, portfolio management, how to prioritize current and incoming projects, resource management, giving visibility into utilization across the organization, time management, easy to use time entry for team members and efficient approval process for managers, roadmaps, organic timeline planning models used to visualize buckets of work, and we'll finish with reporting. Before we dive into that, Let's take a look at one of the dashboards users can set as their home page. This is the Project Manager Alerts dashboard, one of several dashboards that come out of the box with Clarity. Each dashboard is focused on specific types of users, like project managers, resource managers, finance, and executives. On my dashboard, I have four portlets that give unique insights into various elements of my projects. Tasks impacting my project schedule. Issues based on priority milestone details, and resource staffing needs. Each portlet in this dashboard is drillable. I can click on a section to further investigate it. For example, if I want to examine the high priority issues on my projects, I can drill down to access more detailed information. Once I'm done, I can simply return to my dashboard to address other needs of my projects. Most portlets and dashboards in Clarity are configurable by each end user and their information can be exported to Excel. Now we'll look at the way project intake is managed in Clarity. Project intake is managed in an area we call ideas. Ideas are used to identify, define, and plan work prior to becoming an approved project. On my ideas page, I'm able to see a full view of all the ideas of my organization. From this view, I can see key pieces of information such as priority, plan cost and benefit, and approval status. I can also configure additional fields to the screen, giving more detail to the list. A common challenge in several companies is trying to organize the list of potential initiatives. Most have it in several places like Excel, PowerPoint, SharePoint, or a whiteboard in the back corner of an office. Demand management and clarity creates a single organized view of all of your ideas, allowing greater visibility and less overhead. I can open up the idea and fill out the required information as well. This page is also configurable. We can add several types of fields like dropdowns, dates, financial estimates, and more without the need for custom development. I may not want to see the full view of all ideas, so I can filter the list based upon what's important to me. Maybe I want to see all the IT ideas or the transformation team ideas or by location. It's easy to save a view to use for later or to share with others. Clarity also has a powerful out-of-the-box workflow engine and comes with several workflows already created. One of them is an approval process that takes an approved idea and converts it into a project. During this process, I can select a project template and bring over all the information already created on the idea. The project template contains details of the project framework like project roles and a project work breakdown structure or tasks. I'm able to use an out-of-the-box template or one of the custom templates created for my company. Now that we've seen how projects can be created from ideas, let's take a closer look at the list of active projects I have. Each of these tiles represents an active project in my organization. I can filter the list to see only the projects that I'm involved in. Each tile has key information such as start and finish date, milestone timeline, effort and budget widgets, and quick links to navigate to specific pages of my project. Notice that the configuration for some tiles is different than others. These blueprints allow for unique configurations for different types of projects in the organization. For example, my e-commerce portal project is a very detailed IT project while the Executive Dashboard Visibility Project is very lightweight. It only has some basic details and a status report. 
Each of these projects can be managed in the most effective way based on the needs of each team. Now I'll drill into my e-commerce portal project dashboard using a quick link. I can access all major modules of projects using the tabs at the top of the screen. Modules can be reordered, added, or removed based on the project blueprint. This dashboard gives me great visibility into key areas of my project. High-level risk and issue status, upcoming milestones or phase gates, baselining, project team utilization, a project actuals drill down, and key status indicators. I can view the project's details, which includes information brought over when I converted the idea to this project. I can update the general information like project start and finish date and objective. I can view and update the key stakeholders for the project. Keep in mind, we can configure this page with personalized fields as well. My project team consists of both labor and non-labor resources, as well as roles that have not yet been filled. As a project manager, I can add a role to my project and populate the expected allocations. A little later, we'll look at how resource managers can fill these requests. Or if your organization has a simpler process, Clarity can allow the project manager to add the named resource directly to the project. I can also update the allocations for each resource on a week-by-week -week or month-by-month -month basis. I'm also able to configure different fields to this view. Now, as I look at my task plan, I can view the work breakdown structure, or list of tasks, on the left. On the right, I have a timeline view showing the duration and dependencies of my tasks. I can open up the flyout on a task to view all the activity and detailed information. The first tab is for conversations. Here, project managers and team members have a chat area built into the task where they can discuss any progress and blockers to completion. This is a common functionality throughout the solution to simplify collaboration in your organization. I also have a to-do list area where team members or project managers can identify necessary activities within a task. This allows for an extra level of granularity without having to create a task for each detail. I can also see who is assigned to this task and assign more team members as well. I can view the task details and configure additional fields to my flyout. When I need to add a new task, I can click the plus icon to create the task and then drag the task to its place in the WBS. Or I can click within the WBS itself and add the task directly in line as either a sibling or a child task. The timeline area is an interactive schedule where I can push out a task, add to the duration, and create dependencies. Tasks in the timeline are also color-coded based on user preference. In my case, I'm using the task status. I could also choose cost type, that is, whether or not it is a capital or operating task, or I could create a custom set of criteria on my own project. Project managers have several out-of-the-box options in viewing their project tasks, including a Kanban board, where we can move task cards from state to state, a bi-directional interface with Microsoft Project, and the Clarity PPM Gantt view, which is more of a traditional schedule-based view. Now I'll move over to my project cost planning. Here, I'm looking at the details of my project cost forecast, or in Clarity terms, my cost plan. The cost plan breaks down project costs into detailed buckets. In this example, I have costs broken out between capital and operating, internal and external labor, and non-labor. These buckets of costs are also configurable. And while I'm only using two levels of grouping, the cost type and the transaction class, there are several more levels available to get to the exact level of detail that I need. A common challenge I see with several customers is reconciling project data with the financial team. Oftentimes, the project costs are broken down based on the limited categories of the PPM solution. Then the finance team has to dig in and translate the costs into their own terms. 
Here we're able to configure this solution in a way that matches the project cost nomenclature with the finance teams, helping to reduce effort during closing periods. Now that we've looked at how categories can be configured, I'll show how to update the plan cost for the cost plan. The grid can be populated in the following three primary ways. I can manually enter the plan cost by clicking the plus sign button. A new row populates and I can fill out the required criteria for my cost bucket. In this case, I selected operating and maintenance. Then using my keyboard, I can tab over and enter in the cost month by month. I can also populate the grid using my resource allocations on this project. This option will take the allocations from the project team or the staff page we looked at and populate the grid based on their corresponding rates in the back end of the solution. This option is a little more detailed and much more time effective. Finally, I can populate the grid using my resource assignments on this project. This option will take the ETCs from the tasks the resources are assigned to and populate the grid based on their rates in the back end of the solution. Once my project schedule is well defined, I can use this option to create a very detailed forecast of my planned cost. I'm able to have multiple cost plans and Clarity keeps a historical record of each one. Once the cost plan is detailed to the level I need it, it can be submitted to become the budget for my project. The ability to submit a budget is separated from the ability to approve a budget by access rights. We can give those rights to the appropriate users in each organization. Many companies view project financials as a difficult and tedious process. Using Clarity to set up the framework behind the scenes simplifies the process tremendously. In this same area, I can also look at some project level cost reporting, including viewing my planned cost versus my actuals. For this example, I want to look at my cost by quarter. I'll also group my results by cost type. Now I can see the planned and actual costs side by side and the remaining budget. Clarity also allows me to drill into my project actuals and see details surrounding each transaction. Now I'll focus on my project risks. This is the list of risks on my project. Like other pages, I'm able to see some key areas information in the list. I can also configure additional columns to this view. The checked box in the conversations column lets me know that I have a chat open in the risk. I can click the details flyout to view it. On the details tab, I can view the summary information of the risk. I can also configure and add fields to this view. To add a new risk, I can click on the plus icon and fill out the fields in the list or in the details flyout. Risks will show up in a number of portlets and reports to keep track of on a single project and throughout the organization. On the links module, I can create links to different online applications like Google Docs or SharePoint, as well as links to other areas of clarity like reports. Each project also has a document repository module where I'm able to store and update project artifacts. The conversations module is a water cooler like area where general project collaboration can take place. In a post, I can tag specific members of my project team or I can tag the entire team as a whole. Tagging people sends a notification to their email letting them know they've been tagged in a post like most social media platforms. I can also attach documents to a post for review or sign off. I'll finish up projects with my status report module. There are several different reports that can be run for status reporting and clarity. This report lives on my project and is easily configurable to end users. I can update my high level indicators of schedule, scope, and cost and effort. Enter my status report update and upcoming activities. There are also some basic cost and effort metrics. In addition, I also have the next two weeks calendar view at the bottom. This view shows all upcoming tasks and milestones that are scheduled to be completed in the next two weeks. This report is also configurable. I can add and remove different components of the status report. Once the report is ready, 
I can preview the output and publish it to update the project status across different portlets and reports in Clarity. I can also download this copy as a PDF. Now that we've looked at the primary components of the project at the ground level, let's see how that information rolls up to the portfolio view. This is the portfolio dashboard, one of several dashboards that come out of the box with Clarity. This dashboard is broken down into six categories, costs and benefits, roles, cost and health, goal analysis, investment analysis, and capital and operating costs. Each category has its own tab and analysis. I'll focus on the cost and benefits tab. On this page, I have two portlets that give unique insights into my portfolios. The portlets on this page give visibility and detail into my portfolio costs and benefits at a high level. At this level, it's easy to compare and contrast portfolios side by side. Now let's drill down into an individual portfolio. So what is a portfolio in clarity terms? A portfolio is basically a logical grouping of work items or projects we can use to plan and schedule work over a specified period of time. On my screen, I have a list of ranked projects with key information like start and finish date, planned cost broken out by capital and operating, roll demand, and risk score. I have a timeline view that I can use to visualize and modify the schedule of work by month, quarter, or year. I also have real-time constraints built in to understand how my portfolio is tracking to its overall goals and the impact of adding or modifying projects in scope. The line in the middle of the screen is called a water line. This line separates my planned work from my wish list. Everything above the water line are projects we have the budget, people, and time to work on, while everything below the water line are projects we would like to do, but we are either short on budget, people, or time. We can prioritize this list by manually dragging projects to their appropriate rank. We can adjust the water line to add the next project in rank to the planned work. This allows me to see the instant impact to my constraints. As I add online order catalog, my planned capital cost, architect, and developer constraints are exceeded. This means that as I'm asked to add the project to my team's deliverables, rather than saying no, we're too busy, I can come back with actionable information. I need a change request for additional capital budget, and we need X number of architects and developers to get this done. I can also see this in the grid itself. The cells in the grid turn a light orange color, representing when each constraint will be reached. We also have the ability to automate the ranking of projects in the portfolio. We can define ranking rules that allow for personalization in the prioritization of projects. For instance, I want to give the highest rank to projects with the lowest risk and the highest ROI. I set up a rule for each and allow the portfolio to rank the project based on that criteria. Clarity Portfolios have scenario planning with what-if analysis that allows users to model different situations and plan accordingly. In my modeling stage, I can use real-time data from my projects without impacting the projects themselves. I can push out a project schedule to see how that impacts the time constraints. I can plan for an increase in resource capacity or reduction in cost. Now that we've identified resource constraints, let's dig deeper into managing resource allocations throughout the organization. This dashboard allows me to view all the resources in the organization that I have access to, along with their allocations. I can filter this list to see only my resources. For the sake of this example, let's say I'm Rosie Miller. Now I can see all the resources that I manage. It's easy to identify resources that are over or under allocated by the color highlights in the cells. My current view is looking at allocation in hours by weeks, months, quarters, and annual timeframes. I can configure these settings to whichever level of detail makes the most sense for me. I can drill into each resource to see their allocations by project. At the bottom of the screen, I can view all of the open resource requests coming from the project managers. Let's focus on the business analysts. As I open up the business analyst requests, I can see each open request and the allocation requested for each. 
I can use my resources above to fill these requests. To access a little more detail, I can open the details fly out. Here I can see start and end date and who the project manager is, as well as some other key information. I can also use the conversation feature while filling these requests. This is a great tool for project managers to use to specify the type of business analyst they are looking for by years of experience, different tools, etc. Usually project managers are only able to select some pre-configured fields to try to describe their need. This conversation allows them to use their own words to better define the request. When I want to replace the request with a person, I simply add them and confirm the allocation. This will allocate the resource to the project for the requested period of time and remove the request from my list. This is a great single dashboard that shows how I can manage resources at the project level. Now let's look at how we can manage resource plans at a broader level. My weekly detail portlet allows me to see more layers of how my resources are being utilized on projects. Like the last view, I can see the different projects and the hours of allocations for each resource. I can also view their ETC in this same view. The ETC represents the hours my resources being assigned on tasks by the project manager. So where I see I've allocated 40 hours of Joyce's time starting now, the project manager isn't assigning her any work until late March. As a resource manager and as an organization, I want to make sure my resources are being fully utilized. This view gives me visibility into the gap between resources being on a project and actually working on assignments. The next view displays resource capacity versus demand at the role level. Here I have a histogram view that easily identifies some of the bottlenecks in my organization. These roles all have demand exceeding capacity and will have an impact on many projects. I can drill into the histogram to see exactly what projects are utilizing these roles and use these as constraints in my portfolio planning views. These are just a few of the many dashboards resource managers can utilize to effectively manage their people. Now let's take a look at the time management component of Clarity. Time management is divided into two categories, time entry and time approval. Expediting these two functions can be an important factor in user adoption, so there are some efficient mechanisms to do each one in Clarity. First, we'll take a look at how a resource can populate a timesheet, enter their time, and submit it. When I create my timesheet, I can copy my previous timesheet, which will include the tasks I submitted previously. I can also select the copy effort checkbox to copy the hours entered for the tasks as well. The final box gives an option to add all the tasks I'm assigned to. For this example, I'll copy my previous timesheet without the effort. Here I can view all the tasks I'm putting time towards. I can remove any tasks from the list that I did not work on this week. I can also add any open task that I did work on. As I add my hours to the respective tasks, the time bars at the top of the screen update automatically. This includes my time entered versus total availability and project time percentage. I can also put time towards work done on non-project activities, as well as general administration reasons, like vacation. I'm able to enter a note at the timesheet level to provide an update to my approver, such as a reminder that I'm on PTO next Thursday. I can also enter a note at the task level. An example would be needing more ETC to complete a task. Once I'm done, I can submit the timesheet. Now let's look at the review and approve section. Here I'm able to filter for resources to review and approve their time. This list is dependent on the resources I have access to approve. There are multiple status columns that the timesheet can fall under. The timesheet will move from column to column based on its status. On the left, I can see a quick highlight of the resource and their hours entered versus the expected total. I can click on the card to view more details. In my open column, I have two resources with timesheets that haven't been submitted. Rather than send an email blast to everyone saying turn in your timesheets, I can simply send a reminder to each resource. If I have several resources in this status, I can select the Remind All option, 
which sends a reminder only to those whose timesheets have not been submitted. In the Submitted column, I can approve or return the timesheet in the grid. Once I approve the timesheet, it will move to the approved column. The last core functionality I want to focus on is roadmaps. Roadmaps are strategic planning models used to align and forecast work items in a given time frame. There are a lot of similarities between roadmaps and portfolios. However, roadmaps allow some additional visibility and ease of use. Let's look at my roadmap for 2020 annual planning activities. On my screen, I have a list of projects that are planned for work in the fiscal year. These include projects that are carryovers from last year and new initiatives scheduled to start this year. These projects are divided into swim lanes based on their sponsoring organization. I'm able to see which projects roll up to marketing, IT, finance, legal, and HR. Each project has key metrics attached in the timeline view, including capital cost, benefit, and resource capacity. These metrics are also aggregated by each swim lane. The projects are also color-coded. In this example, the color reflects the corporate strategy the project falls under. I can configure my roadmap based on each of these items as well. I can change the view from monthly to quarterly, adjust my swim lanes to show strategic alignment, and my colors to represent sponsoring org. I can even choose which metrics I want to view on each project and in the swim lane aggregation. Additionally, I'm able to create my own personalized pick list that can be used to categorize by color or as swim lanes. When I'm going through my planning activities, I want to track new ideas or potential work items in this view as well. Rather than going through an extensive routing process, I can keep placeholder work items on my roadmap. I simply click the plus icon and drag the new work item in the appropriate swim lane close to the expected start and finish dates. Once I do that, the properties pop-up is displayed and I can fill out some summary level information like name, in this case, new roadmap item. I can add it to my in plan view to see how it impacts the overall plan. And I can specify more detailed start and finish dates. I can also update the selected metrics to see how they impact the roadmap. I can drag any of the projects across the timeline to help structure the overall schedule. I can also add dependencies between projects. Scenario planning is also a useful tool in roadmaps. I can create scenarios as we move throughout the year using up-to-date information from my projects and compare them with the original roadmap created during planning. This allows me to view changes to schedules and target metrics on my projects. I also have a Kanban board where I can see each of my projects as a card on the board under a specific column. Here I'm looking at projects by the phase gate they are currently in. I can move a project card from column to column as the project passes each gate. These columns are also configurable, so I can have whatever visualization makes the most sense for me to use. My grid view allows me to see a list of all projects and newly identified work items in a single view. This view contains detailed information like sponsoring org, start and finish dates, ROI, and total cost broken out by capital and operating costs. At the top of the screen, I have my targeted constraints. I can see the overall rollup of all the projects and new work items and how they impact my finance and resource budget. Now that we've seen a lot of great information in the key areas of clarity, I want to focus on some of the reporting that comes out of the box. While a lot of the information we've already viewed can be exported to formats like Excel and PowerPoint, the out-of-the-box advanced reporting provides over 60 targeted reports that can be scheduled, delivered, and exported to several formats, including PDF, Excel, Word, and more. Let's take a look at three of the out-of-the-box reports provided. The top 50 project watch list shows high-level KPIs at a summary level, as well as project by project. This allows executives to hone in on projects that need their help. The capacity versus demand by role report shows capacity and demand throughout the organization aggregated by role. You can limit this output by department, contractors or employees, and more. It is easy to identify roles that are over or under allocated in this view. 
The project storyboard is essential for project managers. It gives a detailed snapshot of a project at a given time. I can see high-level status report indicators, a detailed breakdown of my labor hours, details of my financial performance. I can also see key status report fields like objectives, key accomplishments, status report update, and upcoming activities. There is also good detail surrounding issues and risks on the project. These are just a few of the many reports that come out of the box with Clarity. In this video, we have shown how Clarity PPM can manage the entire PPM lifecycle, including capturing new ideas in demand management, managing the key aspects of a project like project team, schedule, risks, and budget, trading effective financial forecasts, ways to prioritize current and incoming projects and portfolios, accessing visibility into resource utilization, making time entry easy to use for team members, and the approval process efficient for managers, planning work items using modeling and roadmaps. And we capped it off looking at reporting. We hope this video gives insight into why the Clarity PPM solution is so widely used among large and small organizations. If you would like to schedule a more focused demo for your team, please contact Windmill using the information on the screen.